bass players. Today we're going to move on to page three in the Essential Elements for Strings, book two. And these exercises are going to use the same notes that we worked on on page two, uh, the, the notes in D major on the D string and the A string. Now, one of the main differences between page two and page three is that on page three, we are playing all songs in three, four meter, which means there are three beats in a measure. And that also means that there are only gonna be three prep beats when we play along with the backing track. So just be prepared to come in a little bit sooner when you're playing along with Essential Elements Interactive. The top of the page, there is a yellow box that's got some theory concepts. So please make sure that you go over those theory concepts before you start to make sure that you understand all of them. And please uh, talk to me if you have any confusion about any of those concepts. But we're gonna be playing in three, four meter. We're gonna be doing dotted half notes, also adding in some eighth notes. We will be doing ties. A tie is similar to a slur, but it, it connects two notes that are the same pitch. And we're also gonna be adding some dynamics and also working on some navigation using first and second endings. So let's get started. We're gonna start with number six, which is called D major in threes. This is just your ascending D major scale, and you are going to be playing either three quarter notes or a dotted half note for each pitch. And the dotted half note is three beats. So remember when you add a dot after a note, that adds half the value of that note. So a half note would be two beats, and then you add a dot, it adds half of that, which is one. So three beats for a dotted half note. And we'll play each pitch for one measure or three beats. Now, the next exercise, we are going to add in some dynamic contrast, and we're going to start up at the top of our scale, but we're not going to go down the notes in order. We start with forte. So for forte, you're going to bring the bow a little closer to the bridge, put more weight into the bow. And then as you go through the first four measures, you'll gradually get softer until you're at a piano. Uh, with the piano, we put less weight into the bow and you may move the bow a little further away from the bridge and even use a little bit less bow or maybe the part of the bow that's closer to the tip rather than the frog. So uh, for the forte, you might want to work your way toward the tip and then stay at the tip for the piano. And then we have a crescendo, which means go back to forte gradually, and you'll gradually work your way toward using the lower half of the bow and more bow to make it, to make it louder. exercise is by Edvard Grieg, who is a Norwegian composer, and this is from Peer Gint Suite No. 1. Uh, this is a, an orchestral suite that you often hear in concert performances, but it was actually written as incidental music for a play. And another piece in the same suite is In the Hall of the Mountain King, which is kind of a fun, scary piece of music. But this is Morning Mood. I'm sure that you've probably heard this melody before. It's quite famous. And uh, you've probably maybe heard it played by a flute because in the orchestral rendition of it, it opens with a flute playing this melody. So you're not gonna have to do any shifting for this one, but there are some dynamic contrasts. So why don't you try and focus on uh, playing softly and then getting loud when it asks you to. exercise on page three is number nine, Barker Roll. This is by Jacques Offenbach. And you may recognize Offenbach because he also wrote the Can Can, which is in Essential Elements book one. You may have played that before. This is from a different French operetta than the Can Can was from. This one is from an operetta called The Tales of Hoffman. And it's a nice, smooth, flowing piece. We're gonna be using some slurs in this one. So try and really think about your bow distribution. You're maybe using a little bit more bow, but try and keep the bow moving smooth 
smoothly as you do the string crossings or the note changes within the slurs. You're also gonna do a first and second ending in this piece. That's the way that it's written. So you start at the beginning, the first time through you play the notes under the bracket with the number one, then you will pick up your bow, retake your bow, uh, back to the frog for another down bow, and then the second time through you will skip the first ending, that's the two measures under the bracket with the one, and you'll just play the second ending under the bracket with the two. Okay, so these the first and second ending, that's something that comes up a lot in music, so it's really important to know how to navigate it and to remember to skip the first ending the second time through. You also have some dynamics. You're gonna be mostly loud on this one, but getting soft at the end of each phrase, so that is both times through you get soft, but with the, then when you do the repeat, you'll get loud again. done. Now before we finish for today, let's go over the workouts that are at the bottom of the page. These are just some finger exercises and these exercises are designed to get your hand, arm, and fingers ready for shifting, which you are already doing. The rest of the class probably has yet to learn that. And then also for vibrato. Uh, so let's go over what they mean. The tunneling is basically just putting your, your, your hand, and you should do this in playing position, put it between two strings. You might want to put it between the two lower strings or maybe between the D and the, the G. And then just kind of practice sliding your hand up and down between the two strings like that. And then right in the rails is really similar. You just basically, instead of putting it between two strings, you put it on a string and then you ride that string up and down the fingerboard. So feel free to go beyond where you've already been on your base. So if you want to go up into this range, you're certainly welcome to. And then the tap and, and sliding, you tap your fingers on any string. Notice that makes some sound when you do that. And then you slide it and then tap it in, the, in another spot. So as a bass player, you certainly are no stranger to shifting. You've already jumped into the world of shifting to just to get up to that note. D. But understand that your fingerboard uh, being so large is fairly easy to navigate and um, as your colleagues in the the cello and viola and violin section work on shifting, things are a little bit more contained on their instruments so it's a little bit more tricky to find the spots. Make sure that you've got a good set of tapes on your instrument so that you can navigate using the tapes. I have a tape for first position, first and fourth finger, third position, first and fourth finger. So there's only a half step between between those two. And then my next tape is the harmonic. And um, there are several notes in between this tape and this tape. So uh, just having tapes for some of the notes helps you figure out where the other notes are that are between the tapes as well. So good luck. Don't forget we have a video assessment due on Friday. If you're just starting on bass, um, you don't have to choose one of the more challenging excerpts. You can choose any exercise on page two or page three. Um, of course, number one is the tuning track, so that is not an exercise. Just choose one of them that you like and that you're confident with playing. I'd like you to learn all of the songs on these two pages but I uh, would like to hear one of them, and you may choose which one. Go ahead and record a video of you playing it with or without the backing track and submit that to Canvas. That will be due on Friday. And if you're gonna be playing bass, but you don't have your bass yet, if you've got another instrument that you can do this activity on, and then as soon as you get set up on your bass and you're ready to go, you can switch to bass for your assessments. So good luck, happy practicing, and I hope you enjoy the exercises on page three.